Now listen, we'll, we'll take some more testimonies in a minute. But I want to release something tonight. Yeah! Because I believe God wants to release a prophetic anointing to see in the spirit to have encounters in the spirit <laughs> man I feel the glory of the Lord listen if you got Bibles go to John chapter 1 47 through 51 so it's John 1 47 through 51 I want you to see something. I want to I want to talk to you tonight about the supernatural. And one of the things I want to talk about that's not talked about very often. It's not taught enough in the church. I want to talk to you about Jesus. And I want to talk to you about the angels of heaven. I want to talk to you about the angels of God. Because every single one of you have angels assigned to your life. Angels to protect you. Angels to walk and move and live with you. Angels that give specific anointings for your specific calling. Listen, God wants to take you to another level of your knowledge about the kingdom of God. Listen, did you know that Jesus, wherever he went, he'd say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is the kingdom of heaven? What is the kingdom? Well, one thing's for sure. There is no kingdom without a king that rules that kingdom. How many know Jesus is the king of the kingdom? And he rules and he reigns. And he wants to release heaven's help in this place. Listen, this is a prophetic conference. He wants to open your eyes. He wants to open your ears. He wants to open your hearts. I don't want you to see this. Because when you're a Christian, when you give your life to Jesus, the angels of God begin to watch over you. The angels of God begin to work with you to fulfill the will of God. And I want to show it to you in the Word. Look at this. This is the story of when Jesus meets Nathaniel. He meets a disciple and when he sees him, he says, here's an Israelite without deceit. And, and, and all of a sudden, Nathaniel gets awakened. Remember, remember I told you to shake your neighbor and say, wake up. See, God wants to wake us up to the reality that we live in two worlds at one time. We live in the natural realm. But as sons and daughters, we are to rule and to reign from the supernatural realm. How many know when God created Adam in the garden? He created him out of the dust of the earth. And the breath of God. And Adam became a living being. See, man was created with a dual nature. He was created with natural senses. 
he was created with supernatural senses. He was created out of the dust of the earth, which is the natural. He was created out of the breath of God. <laughs> Which is the supernatural. See, just like you have five natural senses of taste, touch, sight, smell, and sound. So you do, you have supernatural senses taste, touch, sight, smell, sound. See, God created Adam. In the likeness of himself. Adam wasn't created with a sinful nature. He was created in the likeness of God. And when God created him, he placed him in a garden, a garden named Eden. And he told Adam, he said, your job, Adam, is to tend to this garden and to subdue the earth, multiply, and have dominion. See, so when God created man, man didn't have sickness. Man didn't have disease. He was, there was no weakness, there was nothing wrong with him until the fall. And you've got to understand that the word, uh, the word Eden, it means place of pleasure and delight. Did you know that you were created for a, a place of pleasure and delight with your father? To encounter God in the supernatural realm. See, Adam was walking with God in the cool of the day, every single day. He was encountering the supernatural. But when the serpent came and tempted Adam and Eve in the garden when they bit into the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says their supernatural nature was plunged into darkness. See, they lost that glory realm. They lost that ability to walk with God every day in the cool of the day. And all of a sudden, shame came in. Condemnation came in. Fear came in. See, they, they were created with a supernatural nature. But they lost it in the garden. But then the second Adam, Jesus Christ, God the Father sent him by way of a virgin Mary being birth, uh, birthing him. And the second Adam came to restore what the first Adam messed up. But to my art and social body, a yard, you can be able to have the authority area quit on a robin bede to move and walk in the supernatural. The bow one lone name, but in my last show, I need big they go be a if you want to move and walk in the supernatural. The bow one lone name, but in my last show, Chile. How many want to hear? You want to see. You want to know God. He wants to release that realm. So when Jesus was walking the earth, and he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Bible says the heavens open. And God began to speak to him. And everything started to take off with miracles, signs, and wonders. And even after Jesus went through the temptation in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says the angels of God ministered strength to him. 
See, God wants to minister strength to people. I mean, if Jesus Yeshua operated and worked with the angelic realm, how many know we should? How many of you remember when they came to take Jesus by force? When the Roman guards and the high priests came to crucify him. Listen, the Jesus we serve, he's not a weak God. He's a powerful God. And you know what happened? Listen to this, this is crazy. The guards came. And they, they're a whole bunch of massive guards. And they said, are you Jesus of Nazareth? And this is what Jesus said. I am. And the power of God knocked them all to the ground. Every Roman soldier got knocked to the ground. And then Peter went crazy. He took a sword out. And he chopped off poof, the ear of the high priest. And Jesus looks it at him. Hey, Pedro Jesus. He probably had to look like, come on, man. Hey, Pedro. And he goes and gets the ear. Now you be And he puts it back on. Come on, that's power. Cut off here. And you know what Jesus says to Peter? He says, Peter, Pedro, did you not know that I could call on 10,000 angels? And my father would hear me. He said, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. See, Peter thought he had to fight with the natural weapons. But Jesus rebuked him after putting a man's ear supernaturally back on his head. And he said, don't you know I could call on a legion of angels? And my father would send them? Listen, we need to learn how to call on heaven's help in times of warfare, in times of attack. We need to learn how to work with the hosts of heaven. Now look at this. John chapter 1 starting in verse 47 it says Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him and said of him behold an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit Nathanael said to him how do you know me Jesus answered and said before Philip called you you were under the fig tree and I saw you Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe you will see greater things than these? And he said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Hereafter you shall see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. See, this is what Jesus was saying to Nathaniel. See, Nathaniel believed that Jesus was the Savior of the world because of one word of knowledge. Because he told him 
the answer to his question. Jesus said, there's an Israelite without guile. Nathaniel said, how do you know? He said, I saw you under the fig tree. See, I believe the fig tree was the place where Nathaniel prayed every day. And that's why he freaked out and went, wow! You really are the savior of the world. But then Jesus says something interesting. He said, you believe because of one word of knowledge? He said, you're going to see greater things than this. He said, you're going to see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Oh, I don't think you got what I'm saying. See, Jesus was prophesying. See, this is what he was saying. He was saying, oh, Nathaniel, you think the gifts of the Spirit are amazing. You think the word of knowledge is awesome. Oh, just wait until I, the Son of Man, make my home in your heart and the angels of God begin to ascend and descend. Upon you, upon every man, woman, every child. See where Jesus dwells as Lord and Savior on the throne of our hearts. It gives us an open heaven. It gives us access. See, what, what, what does this mean, Jeremy? This means everywhere I go, I'm a gateway. I'm a supernatural gateway to bring heaven to the earth. See, when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he said, he said when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. See, God wants every born again believer to live a lifestyle of an open heaven where they have access to God's voice they have access to God's power and the angels of heaven are moving up and down See, this is a prophetic conference. And God wants to open up prophetic experiences. He wants to open up an impartation of the supernatural realm that you would begin to encounter the heavenly realm. Listen, I remember the first time that I realized the angels of God were real. Now listen, I did something really stupid. I wasn't even saved yet. I wasn't even following Jesus. When I was 16 years old, I stole my dad's car when he was out of town. Really nice sports car. A Corvette. 
and we were me and my friends driving. And I was trying to show off. And I hit the gas too much. And the car spun off the road. I flew off the road going 50 miles an hour. I had no seatbelt on. And the car hit the trees. Boom! And I got ejected out of the car. Through the sunroof. And I watched in slow motion as the car went. And in slow motion, I started falling and I was about to hit my face. And five flashes of light. Boom, 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 boom. And I rolled. And I jumped up. The car was destroyed. It was only about three blocks from my house. So I ran home and had the most awkward phone call of my life. I had to call the paramedics and say, can you come get me? And my friends, I just crashed the car. And they came. And the doctor said to me, it's impossible that you're alive. Nobody's ever been ejected out of a car 50 miles an hour and had no broken bones, had no uh, fatalities. But you see, the angels of God were watching over me. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't even because I was following the Lord. See, my mother was on fire and she was a praying mama. In Psalm 37, verse 4, it tells us the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Listen, there's angels that have protected you your entire life. You didn't even know that God sent his angels to protect you. There's many of you that have been almost dead. Come on, who's in this place that should be dead that, that lived? Come on, look at this. All these people. All these people. But you know what? God had his angels watching charge over you. And you got to understand something. We got to get past the fear of the supernatural. You know, some people focus more on the devil than they do on Jesus. Than they do on the kingdom of God. Listen, I want to say something right now. It's time to get our eyes on Jesus and get our eyes off of darkness and realize that Jesus can bring breakthrough. Now listen, I want you to hear this. How many of you know you would, we would be really, really stupid to worship angels? How many know we'd be really dumb if all we did was focus on angels non-stop because it's all about Jesus but how many of you know we'd be equally as foolish to ignore the angels because if God wants to send heaven's help to protect you to assist you to minister to other people to bring breakthrough into your city to bring breakthrough into your nation then why would we ignore that? 
See, here's the reality. The kingdom of heaven is greater than the kingdom of darkness. Did you know that when Satan fell, when Lucifer got booted out of heaven, the Bible says that he only brought one third of the angels down. So wait a minute, if that's true, then mathematically, scientifically, how many know you got a better chance to see an angel than you do a demon? Because there's two times as many angels on God's side as there are demons on Satan's side. See, the odds are stacked on our side. How could we lose? Well, I'll tell you how people are in warfare and they're losing. They're too devil focused. Listen, I don't know how it is here. But in America, America listen, there, uh, people get so focused on the devil that they forget that Jesus is greater. You talk to them, oh, pray for me, the devil's after me. Oh, the devil! Ah, he made me do it! Come on, don't act like some of us aren't like that. But what would happen if you begin to rise up and you begin to think like Jesus and all of a sudden you begin to work with the angels of God and the next time there's warfare instead of being freaked out you start dispatching angels. You start going, Lord, I'm asking you right now release the Warfare angels, God. And all of a sudden, darkness gets pushed back. Listen, I want to just talk to you about a few different kinds of angels. Because uh, God wants us to understand. This is a prophetic conference. He wants to open our mindset. He wants to open our hearts. And he wants us to begin to work with heaven to release breakthrough. Listen, Daniel, in Daniel chapter 10, it's the famous chapter where Daniel does the Daniel fast. Where Daniel eats nothing but, but bland foods. Nuts and berries. That, that's it, nothing else. In fact, Daniel did a Miranda vegan fast. My wife. She's vegan. <laughs> but you got to understand, Daniel recognized his generation was going to receive a breakthrough. According to the prophecies of Jeremiah, he began to fast, he began to pray. And after 21 days, the angel Gabriel showed up. And the angel said this to him. He said, Daniel, the minute you prayed your prayers to heaven, the Father answered your prayer. But the prince of Persia stood in the way to resist the breakthrough. So God had to send Michael the archangel to break the power of resistance. And Daniel and Israel got a breakthrough. Listen, what forces of darkness 
are standing in front of your promises. What resistance, what warfare is trying to stop your family from getting saved? Listen, we need to begin to understand that there's power in the realm of prayer and when we pray heaven gets released. So you know what God's going to do tonight? Like with Daniel he's going to release warfare angels and he's going to break the resistance that's been trying to stop you from going to the next level. Hallelujah. Listen, there's traditionally there's three kinds of angels or three angels that we talk about a lot in the Bible. They were three archangels. Which, by the way, God is the only one who was and who is and who is to come. He's the only eternal being that has always been. The angels of God were created beings by God, just like you and me. And so I want you to see this. Because how many know the Bible makes mention of Michael? of Gabriel Gabila. and Lucifer. Lucifer, so Lucifer, Lucifer was the archangel that got kicked out of heaven because he wanted to sit on the throne of God. He came against God. God judged him, kicked him out of the heavens. And now he is Satan. He's one of the, the three created archangels. But Gabriel, he's a different kind of angel from Michael. Listen, Gabriel is a messenger angel. He makes announcements. Listen, one of the functions of angels is they announce things that God is about to do. Listen, one angelic encounter can open up nations. I'll never forget last year I was preaching in Canada and I was praying for the meeting. And this angel came and I had a vision where the angel came and brought me the flag of Pakistan. I grabbed the flag. I came out of the vision. And the Lord said, you're going to Pakistan to preach the gospel. He said, I want you to tell your crusade coordinator. So I said, yes, Lord, we'll go in 2020. He said, no, you're going in 2019. I said, God, there's no way. It takes a year to set up mass crusades. This is July. He told me, you're going to go in October. It's only a few months later. And I said, but Lord, that, that's crazy. And, and the Lord said, what, you don't believe me? And I said, forgive me, Lord. I told my coordinator, we're going to Pakistan. He said, yeah, 2020. He said, I said, no, 2019. He said, you're crazy. There's no way. He goes, you know we can't set one up that fast. How are you going to get the money that fast? And then all of a sudden he went, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, Bob. He said, sir, I believe you're a prophet of the Lord. He said, let's just see what God does. So I released the angel. I released the angel to open the doors and to bring the finances. That was my prayer. 
Two days later, my crusade director calls me. He goes, man, now I know you heard the Lord. He said, I had a phone call from Marilyn Hickey's ministry. She had an evangelist who was double booked. He's supposed to do a crusade in October in Pakistan. But he can't do it because he's supposed to do another one in another nation. Do you know somebody that could do the Pakistan crusade? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And she said, here's the good news. We even paid for half of it already. So God opened the door to go to Pakistan. And you know what? We won 155,000 salvations in three nights. We preached the gospel. Signs and wonders and miracles. Listen, we're going back now in March to preach to 250,000 people a night. And it all came out of one angelic visitation. Where the angel announced, You're going to Pakistan. See, that's supernatural. See, some of you right now are feeling the challenge in the spirit. But there's good news for you. Because do you know what God does with the fivefold ministry? The book of Ephesians says that some are given to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. To equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. See, when, when, when you carry a prophetic mantle, a prophetic grace, like I do, then God gives you a supernatural anointing to impart to the church the anointing that you carry. See, God's going to open your eyes. He's going to open your ears. And He's going to open many of your hearts to angelic encounters. Even and dreams who wants what I'm talking about listen very quickly I want to just say this to you there's different kinds of angels and I want to, I want to just bring some revelation to you listen what does your personal angel look like well, I'll tell you what, he looks like you. Somebody say, where's that at in the Bible? How about Acts chapter 12? When Peter was thrown into prison. And the church was at Mary's house praying and interceding. They're asking God to release Peter from prison. And God sends an angel. Peter's in a cell with two security guards on outside and two outside the door. And the angel comes in, strikes Peter, says, get up. Put your robe on. The Bible says he walks out of the prison, through the door, out the front gate. He thought he was having a vision. But in all actuality, it was real. Now that's supernatural. And then he ends up going to the, the house where they're praying. And a servant girl named Rhoda hears Peter's voice when he knocks on the door. Acts chapter 12, verse 13. And she opens the door and slams it on his face. 
She runs into the, the back. Tells all the people who are praying for Peter. Peter's here. He answered our prayers. Here's what their response was. Nah. No, it's not Peter. It's just his angel. Acts chapter 12, verse 13. They had more faith that Peter's angel was at the door than Peter himself. I mean, no, that'll blow your mind. But you know what it tells me? They were more used to the supernatural than we are in this day. And it, and it also tells me that our angels probably look just like us. And listen, I've, I've had this experience. One time I got invited to a church. This is at the very beginning of my ministry. A church about 45 minutes from my hometown. I went. And when I got there, I said, why did you invite me to the church? They said, because you prophesied over the elder at our church on the plane. You told him your testimony about how you were a baseball player and gave it up to preach the gospel. You prophesied over him. So accurately. And he even got my phone number from him. And I said, well, when, when did this happen? He said, last weekend. There's one problem though. I wasn't on an airplane for six months. I never flew on the airplane. See, I believe my angel went on the airplane and prophesied to this man so that God could open up the door for me to preach. See, the angels of God are always at work. Listen, give me five more minutes. And we're going to make a decree. We're going to release the power of God in this place. We've already seen miracles. But God wants to release an activation. Listen, God wants to release angels of fire. In Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah the prophet saw the Lord high and lifted up and, and the train of his robe filled the temple and when he saw Jesus he started to scream who am I to come before you Lord for I'm a man of unclean lips See, all of a sudden, the fear of the Lord came. And Isaiah didn't feel worthy to stand before the king of heaven. But then an angel called a seraphim angel. They had six wings. With two they flew, with two they covered their feet, and two they covered their eyes. And they would worship God. They, they, took, with some, they took with some tongs a coal from the altar of God. A coal of fire. And they touched Isaiah's lips. And all of a sudden, Isaiah heard the Lord say, Who will go for me? Who will I send? And he went from fear and insecurity to boldness. 
And he began to say, send me, Lord, send me. See, this is what God wants to do tonight. He wants to send angels of fire to release boldness to you so that you can preach the gospel with miracles, signs, and wonders, with encounters. Come on, he wants to release guardian angels. Listen, how many know we better embrace these guardian angels? How many know that? How many know the coronavirus can't touch you? Why? Because we got angels who protect us. We don't need to be like the world and be afraid and be terrified because God has set his angels charge over you so you won't dash your foot upon a stone. Listen, just like I talked about crashing the car. If God could protect me from dying, being ejected out of a, a 50 mile an hour car crash, how much more could He protect you from a, a, a little virus? Listen, John G. Lake. John G. Lake. He was a man of God from the early 1900s had one of the greatest healing anointings of the century. He was so anointed by God's Spirit that he went to the doctors when they had the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague was killing millions. And he said to the doctor, put it in my hand. Put the bubonic plague in my hand. And put it under a microscope. They put the bubonic plague in his hand. And the scientists watched it die in the palm of his hand. Because the anointing of God was too powerful. See, there's a reason why I've been talking about this is because God wants to deal with this virus. He wants to deal with fear and he wants to encourage you that you cannot be touched. And he's sending his angels. Come on, Psalm 91. Says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Now look at this. Look at this, talking about the angels. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. Look at this right here. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that, white, that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays at noon's day. Look at this part right here. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Come on, it says, but it says only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge even from the most high your dwelling place. 
No evil shall befall you, and nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you and to keep you in all your ways. And they will, they will, and their hands shall bear you up. At least you dash your foot on a stone. See, some of you better get excited right now. See, we are not afraid of pestilence. We are not afraid of sickness. Because we serve a supernatural God in a supernatural kingdom. And he'll give angels charge over you. He'll protect your family. He'll protect your body. He'll protect your mind. Oh, I'm telling you, the devil can't touch you. Listen, if you want this anointing, come to the front. Come to the front. If you want this anointing, now we're going to make a decree that God would release his angels in this place and that he would release angelic encounters but we're also we're going to make a decree over China that God would send his warring angels to destroy that disease that God would release breakthrough come on is there anything too hard for God no now listen if you want that anointing I'm talking about if you want to have encounters with God where you hear his voice where the angels of heaven are released where you have encounters with God come to the front God responds to hunger He responds to hunger I'm giving this for those of you that are still out there Listen, don't live your life in fear Live in response to the King of Kings To the Lord of Lords See, the reason why we have altar calls is because God always meets his people on the altar in history the breakthroughs of God came with an altar Abraham built altars Solomon built altars listen there were altars built where God did unusual things I want you to put your hands up I want you to receive tonight and the first thing we need to do is just just give Jesus glory come on just for two minutes just worship him right now just worship him right now hey hey
Listen. Right now, we release the Holy Spirit and fire in this place. Right now, we release the angels of heaven. We commission a generation to move in the full gospel with signs, with wonders, with miracles. And right now, we release the angels all over this room with coals of fire. To see in the Spirit. To encounter the love of God. We release right now. The assignment of God. Guardian angels being assigned. To watch over every person in this place. Every family. Every man, every woman, every child. We release heaven's hell. Come on, I prophesy. An open heaven. Over every hungry heart tonight. I prophesy right now. We release the impartation of the angels of God ascending and descending from the Son of Man from Jesus Christ who lives inside of you. Listen, every one of you are receiving an activation tonight of an open heaven we're like Jesus told Nathaniel the angels ascend and they descend upon the son of man listen if you're saved tonight if you're born again you know Jesus the son of man lives on the inside of you and tonight he's releasing a revelation to you that you are a ladder you're a supernatural gateway for, for heaven to come to the earth we release that anointing now I want to do one more thing I want you to agree with me in prayer that Jesus would re release the warring angels over the nation of China to destroy this, this, this coronavirus. So come on, just start to pray in the spirit. China tonight that Lord you'd release breakthrough over this coronavirus God that you would release your warring angels Lord release Michael the warring angel to bring that demonic spirit down to destroy Place. Yes. 
No virus shall touch you. And we declare you have the power to destroy sickness, disease and pestilence. Come on, look at your hands. Look at your hands all over this place. Look at your hands. And I want you to pray with me. I want you to say, I have the power. Resurrection power. The anointing of God's spirit. My hands are the hands of Jesus. They release his love and they release his power. Now I want to just pray this over you. Father, release a mighty healing anointing. A miracle working anointing over everybody's hands this, this night, God. We release that now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody give Jesus a big shout. မိစ်ဝေးကူကြီးရှုနေတာဒီယူအမ်စီအတင်းတော်ရဲ့တရားခေါ်ချက်များပဲဖြစ်ပါတယ်မိစ်ဝေးအာမလေးရှားနိုင